So Gus Johnson is a content creator that I've personally discussed in a few videos of mine in recent times. He's somebody that I used to have a lot of respect for and I used to enjoy quite a few of his videos up until a recent situation that came out around five to six months ago. Gus's ex-girlfriend Sabrina Abelina or Abelina Sabrina came out with a video speaking about her personal experience with going through an ectopic pregnancy and how her ex Gus Johnson neglected her and pressured her in to an abortion. Now, in my opinion, which I've said multiple times, this is an incredibly brave video. This is a hard thing to come out and speak about, especially given the fact that you know for a fact that no matter what, you're always going to get backlash on the internet when you speak against somebody or just in general speak about a traumatic experience. Now, for the most part, the internet collectively came together and supported Sabrina, but there were most definitely a vocal minority crowd going around basically saying things like, Why does this need to be public? This is a part of your relationship. This shouldn't be on the internet. Well, I mean, what you went through was really traumatic, but was there really a need to drag Gus's name through the mud? I can't believe you said this horrible thing about my favorite content creator and the things that he actually done to you in your previous traumatic experiences. Shut up, man. And this is why I kind of laugh when a lot of people like to pretend that they actually care about mental health and traumatic experiences. Yeah, yeah, I care about mental health, guys. I care about mental health until it actually impacts me and creators that I like on the internet because you can speak about the things that have impacted you negatively but if it's involving a content creator that made a video that I liked four years ago then I'm gonna have to stop you there. You can't speak about how somebody's actions negatively impacted your life because I actually like that person's videos. You see guys it sounds a bit mental but uh this is the takes that a lot of people seem to be making. If you're one of those people Please just um, reevaluate your life decisions. Hey, you can't speak about my favorite content creator like that. I know I've never spoken to him or had any personal interactions with him, but, 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 but I liked one of his videos from four years ago. I've personally never understood the rhetoric of uh, we should never speak about our personal relationships or we should never speak about things that went on in our private lives and speak about it on the internet. Because to me, when people say that, I, I, I do find it a little bit sus, a little bit sus that you for some reason don't want to speak about your private relationship on the internet. What, did something go wrong there where you did something wrong? And I get it. Not everything does need to be posted, but if somebody wants to speak about their personal traumatic experiences, I think they have the full right to. And if you are against that, then I'm going to probably think you are sus because maybe you have done something bad yourself if you don't want somebody to speak about their experiences or when somebody has done something bad to them. Am I making sense right now? I do just find it... A little bit sus. A person creates a video speaking about their traumatic experience without even name dropping your favorite content creator and your first thought is, hey, I understand this, but what if it negatively impacts my favorite content creator on the internet? It's just a little bit weird. It's, it's actually very weird. But you know, in the last few months, I've kind of looked past that based on the pretense that the internet is basically this nutty hellhole full of deranged lunatics that are willing to do anything to defend content creators that they've got this weird parasocial relationship with based on the fact that, you know, most people seemingly were defending Sabrina and standing up for Sabrina, which was very nice to see. And even Gus Johnson himself responded to the situation, which is his right to do so. And in these responses, he, I, I guess, pretty much admitted to everything that Sabrina said in these videos and he apologized to her and I thought the situation was done but then Gus weirdly came back with a, a, a comeback video of where he basically in my opinion mocked people that have gone through traumatic medical experiences this video was very weird to say the least oh I shouldn't be moving around this much in case it's spinal I don't care if it's melted at this point it's still helping man I really took my health for granted <laughs> guys seriously defense god what I would not give for the full use of my limbs right now do you think this is gonna make the morning announcements tomorrow I just think people should be made aware oh okay okay I think it feels a little bit better I should be able to reach out ow crap now I gotta milk this one for the next month look 
I don't know if I'm reaching here, but I definitely feel like this is a very weird video to come back with, especially given that at that moment of time, a lot of people on Gus's fan base were saying that Sabrina was milking the situation, milking it for attention, despite she only actually spoke about it in one YouTube video. I, I, I do just find that a little bit weird that this was the video he decided to come back with. Especially given that, as I said, in Gus's two responses to this, he basically apologized and said how he realized that what he did was wrong, which in my opinion basically proved everything that Sabrina was saying in her original video, because guys, why would he admit to everything if it wasn't true? That wouldn't make any sense. But recently, Gus then came out with a video, I guess somewhat trying to prove his innocence in this situation. A Twitch streamer known as Pay Money Wubby, who I've never really heard of, and that isn't me shaming them, I've, I've just genuinely never heard of them, came out with this interview of where they got Gus on his live streaming channel. And I have a lot of issues, surprisingly, with this interview and how it was conducted, but I am mainly going to be focusing on the things that Gus actually said in this video. And if you want to take more of a look into how how Wubby conducts the interview, I highly suggest you go watch Nick Is Not Green's second channel video about it because I do agree with a lot of the things he has to say in that video, particularly with the fact that I guess during this interview Wubby got a little bit hungry and uh, decided to start eating uh, chicken nuggets. I do not want to negate or discredit any of the legitimate trauma that she had to go through. Um, I, I can't imagine being in her position. You know, I was very intimately close to her and this situation, but I, I can't imagine being in her position. Um, it had to be extraordinarily difficult. Yeah, and, you know, I, I don't at all. I don't want to create any. It's just a little bit strange. I don't know why you would get Gus on, and the first thing he actually said to him was a joke about how Gus is an abuser. Well, if it isn't Gus the abuser Johnson in the flesh, and then think, you know what? I'm gonna start munching away on some chicken nuggies. Can't imagine being in her position. And the chat clearly saw this, and even they thought, despite being fans of the guy, yeah, this is um. This is a little weird, mate. Uh, probably don't eat whilst you're interviewing somebody about the topic of abuse. I wouldn't do that, and it's clear that this chat wouldn't do that, and it's clear that even he thought this was a little bit weird because he actually did kind of cut this out of the segment on his VOD channel. Yeah, probably probably for a good reason too. It was very inappropriate and very weird, and I'm not really going to go further into speaking about how he conducted this interview. As I said, you can go watch Nick's video about it. I mainly want to focus on Gus's answers, because to me, they are very manipulative, they are very sugarcoating based, and I just am not really happy with what I heard in this interview. It was just absolutely so saddened that we had to go through this shit, and, and really I just wanted to be known, especially as I talk about her and some of these situations that... I do not want to negate or discredit any of the legitimate trauma that she had to go through. Um, I, I can't imagine being in her position. Um, she and I had talked a number of times about what would happen if this did, if she did become pregnant. And we had both agreed that since we were really young and uh, didn't really have a lot of our personal life footing in, in order yet, uh, neither of us really had any money uh, when we moved out here. Uh, we both agreed that it was not, uh, uh, we couldn't give a good life to a child at that time. Um, so we had agreed that, you know, if a pregnancy did occur, that we would seek termination. You know, I just uh, funded the podcast with Eddie and was trying to deliver that on time and, and everything. Um, and there was just a lot going on and we, neither of us had prepared for this. It was really terrifying. Um, we, we started going to doctor's visits and Planned Parenthood together uh, to try to look at our next options. And it really worried me right away um, that Sabrina began to express a change of her mind in regards to what we would do with the kid. And, you know, she was kind of in between jobs and stuff at the time, and she just kind of fully changed her mind on that. And, and I didn't deal with that in a very mature way. Um, I, I was really f fearful. I just, you know, I just told her I wasn't ready for this, and I just expressed that with her at the time. Now, a lot of people have heard this part of the interview, and it's kind of been like this groundbreaking thing, apparently. I've got a lot of texts being like, whoa, man, did, did you see that? Did, did, you, did you see that Sabrina actually agreed to the abortion? This, this changes everything. No, it doesn't, guys. It doesn't change anything. Sabrina literally admitted this in her video. It's so weird, like once you get those hormones in your body, there's like this instinct that kicks in that makes you want to 
protect it, even though your brain is like, no, no, we're not ready for this. This was always the plan. If this happened, you promised your boyfriend that we would do this. So it was really scary to be receiving all this conflicting pressure from medical staff and your body to not do it, and then being pressured by your partner to do it. It felt like I didn't even have a choice. It really felt like I wasn't even allowed to consider. I didn't deal with it in a mature way, Gus Johnson said. And I didn't deal with that in a very mature way. In my opinion, guys, that's a little bit of manipulation. It's a little bit of sugarcoating. Sugarcoating over the fact that he indeed pressured Sabrina into getting an abortion. Oh, dang, did we do that? I done goofed and forced my partner into an abortion. Ah, oh, shucks, guys. I, I guess I dilly do done doofed it. Uh, what? Just... What? Gus? You dealt with it in a... In a mature way. It just seems like you're... What's the word? Bullshitting! And yeah, maybe it is a little bit weird of me to make somewhat of a joke out of that statement, but what's even weirder is the statement that you didn't handle it in a mature way. Gu uh, guys, that is just him sugarcoating over him saying, yes, I did you know, pressure her into an abortion by mentally berating her. But you know, I'm, I'm just now gonna try and nice it up and make it sound like it wasn't exactly as worse as it was originally portrayed to be. No, I think this actually makes it even worse. You've admitted to these things, but now you're kind of backtracking and trying to make it sound a little bit better, which is just incredibly manipulative. And by the way, I fully understand that a pregnancy can be an extremely scary thing to go through, not just for the, the person that's actually pregnant, but obviously for the man involved in this situation, I can understand that it would be scary. I, I, I get that. And sure, there can be arguments, maybe debates. That's something that happens in a relationship. A lot of people have been speaking about how this wasn't a nuanced thing. We originally thought it was nuanced. Nobody said this was a nuanced thing. I'm pretty sure previously I have said, I can understand that there would be arguments in this thing and I can understand that somebody would be scared especially if this is the first time they've gone through this but that still doesn't take away from the fact that he did pressure her into an abortion and he has apologized for that nothing in this interview can change my mind on that being a terrible thing even if there is a bit of missing context which I don't think there actually is there is nothing that can change the fact that this guy has apologized for pressuring her into an abortion and is now trying to sugar coat that by saying it was him being immature. And I think if there is one thing to take from this is that doing a pre-existing agreement of not going through with a pregnancy is much different to when you actually get pregnant. Because as Sabrina said, when you become pregnant, your body naturally wants to protect that pregnancy. Whereas when you aren't pregnant, you're obviously not really going to take these things into context, especially if you haven't gone through that situation previously. And I've always personally gone under the sentiment of if you're willing to have sex with somebody, you should also be willing to, I, I guess, stand up for when you have to deal with certain consequences like pregnancy. You don't know how somebody is going to react when they get pregnant. You don't know if they're whether going to want to keep it or not keep it. This is just something that happens. And I think if you're genuinely willing to have sex with somebody, you should be willing to deal with these consequences. It may be tough. I'm not going to say it won't be tough, but this is something that you should be willing to to accept and deal with if you're willing to go with the deed. I think that's a pretty fair way of putting it. And if you're not willing to deal with that responsibility, then just don't do the deed. As a lot of people have been pointing out, this isn't a very nuanced thing. Pregnancy and abortion are incredibly difficult things to go through. And I think if you're really, really wanting to put pressure on Sabrina for perhaps changing her mind in this situation, you're a complete moron that clearly doesn't understand how the body reacts when somebody gets pregnant. And despite what Gus says throughout this whole thing about how he was immature, it's very clear to what he was saying actually went on in this situation. It's very clear that he did pressure her into getting this abortion, but he likes to sugarcoat it with saying things like, oh yeah, I wasn't exactly being team orientated when I was, I guess, mentally berating her. One thing that kept getting brought up tonight and that I've seen brought up quite a bit is uh, the... The, the the pressure that we really only know the side that she put out um but but there was a, a lot of implied pressure to the point where a lot of people called abuse uh of of the abortion 
um, thing. A lot of people said they're taking what she said and they're they're expanding on it that like you weren't open to conversation. There was stonewalling. Is that? Do you want to elaborate on that at all? Is that how it went? Um, do you view things differently? Is there more that we could know about that situation that would you think would help clarify? Or do, totally, was it as accurate as she explained? I, I mean, I totally understand you asking. Um, I, I can't speak too much to the minutia of conversations that I had, you know, four years ago. But I, you know, we did talk about this a lot. I, I didn't. I didn't say that we shouldn't talk about it, but at the same time, I recognized that some of the language that I was using was not the most conducive to a very team oriented approach of like, what do we do here? I was just really afraid what to do. And we just weren't ready for the situation. And I think that sometimes I just said some stupid stuff after we broke up. I mean, we, I, I think a lot of people don't really re realize this. Um, this situation happened before her video came out, it had happened about three years prior. I think already there are a lot of folks that maybe thought that this had happened really recently. It happened about three years prior. Um, I mean, this is just clear and complete other bullshit. Like her video starts, starts in the first 20 seconds with her saying this. Oh, hello. Um, on this very day, a certain number of years ago, I was in the hospital dying. Yeah, uh, Chief, I, I think anybody with more than one IQ can kind of realize that a certain number of years ago wasn't any time recent. It was a certain number of years ago. I haven't really been able to tell people about this over the years kind of had to keep it to myself and you know what i'm really not surprised that this did take a certain number of years for sabrina to come out and speak about because imagine having to be under the pressure of dealing with an mentally abusive fan base not not just the person that you've had to deal with but imagine coming out and speaking about your traumatic experiences and then getting mentally berated by that person's fan base that is such an unbelievably disgusting thing to have to deal with and Sabrina has clearly been dealing with that for the last six months, particularly in the last week, with a lot of people, I guess, changing their tune, now going against Sabrina, saying, Oh, there's more nuance to this, Sabrina lied. I don't understand where she lied, guys. I really don't. Everything that she has said, Gus has admitted to. He hasn't denied any of this. He's just come out and sugarcoated a few things and added a few, I guess, little stories here and there. Nothing has changed. Nothing has excused used his actions, it's exactly the same as it was one week ago. I'm actually quite amazed at how quickly the internet can change its opinion on things. It genuinely does shock me how easy it is to manipulate a fan base. Like, guys, I, 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 I'm I, actually quite shocked at how quickly people have changed their tunes in this situation by Gus saying, yeah, guys, I was, I, you know, I was, I was not team orientated in this situation. Guys, I, I, I think I need to explain to you what him not being team orientated means here. It means that he pressured her, and I'm gonna say it for a 50th time in this video, into an abortion, but he's saying it in a nice way to make you think that it wasn't as bad as it actually seems. And I'm gonna say, guys, it is as bad as it actually seems. I'm sorry that your content creator that you loved has turned out to be a not very nice person. The, the, the nice old American guy, I can't do an American accent, the nice guy who you thought was this great cool dude isn't that much of a great call, dude. And I'm sorry, but that's just something that you're going to have to deal with. And I'm sorry that Sabrina is having to go through this again and again. And people will say, well, she didn't need to come out and speak about it. Guys, she did. It's her story of abuse, but you don't need to go over to her platform and then further abuse her because that's not going to help anyone in this situation. Even if you do agree with Gus, you don't need to go over to her platform and attack her for, for things which aren't even valid. Now in this situation, I've always said that the pressuring into an abortion thing is obviously the worst possible thing that's happened here. I genuinely do not care if Sabrina has made some sub tweets, made 
other things public. I, I genuinely don't care about any of that. Is it unprofessional? Actually, no, it, it, it's not. She come out of her personal experience and she has the full right to be upset, especially given the fact that Gus responded to this in very weird ways, like his first video back of where he is blatantly making fun of people who have gone through traumatic medical experiences. I think she has the full right to make statements about this. She has the full right to like tweets, retweet tweets, agree with people that are defending her. She has the full right to do that, and I don't care that anybody is upset by that. But it is clear that the people in this interview were very upset by that because there is an entire segment dedicated to complaining about a few posts that Sabrina may have made on Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube, or even on Twitch. The remainder of the day, retweeting and liking people's tweets that, you know what happens when someone does that, right? You retweet someone, it sends it to your followers, and you like something, it shows it to your followers as well, of people not only name dropping him, but adding him, going through and giving a very, very skewed version of events that she was just sitting there retweeting. She she took to Twitter the same day that the video came out, um, and she was liking tweets and retweeting things from random users that I, I just feel like really unfairly mischaracterized me. Oh, dude, uh, dude, I'm so, I'm so sorry to hear that, man. I mean... Uh, dealing with mischaracterization must genuinely be a, like a really sad and traumatic thing. Matt, I'm, I'm so sorry to hear you went through that. That's terrible. I, I can't speak too much to the minutia of conversations that I had, you know, four years ago. But I, you know, we did talk about this a lot. I, I didn't. I didn't say that we shouldn't talk about it, but at the same time, I recognized that some of the language that I was using was not the most conducive to a very team-oriented approach of like, what do we do here. I was just really afraid what to do and we just weren't ready for the situation and I think that sometimes I just said some stupid stuff. Oh! Did you just... Did you just mischaracterize a situation by calling pressure and abortion into saying stupid things? That... That seems like a mischaracterization, Gus, by sugarcoating an incredibly traumatic event. That... And Gus, what... What do we think about mischaracterization? She was liking tweets and retweeting things from random users that I, I just feel like really unfairly mischaracterized me. Oh, well, so fair enough, I guess. But yeah, I actually don't care if Sabrina liked or retweeted any posts defending her. She has the full right to do these things, just like Gus has the full human right to come onto this incredibly biased interview where the interviewer eats chicken nuggets whilst dealing with incredibly sensitive traumatic events. And that's what's incredibly weird to me about this whole interview is that throughout the whole thing, they've spoken about cancel culture and how Gus was canceled. I think Gus's uh, ability to talk was taken from him by everyone trying to cancel him. I mean, he's on a platform speaking to thousands of people in an interview which has been seen by hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people. I'd like to know where the cancelling is here. It's not like the guy's been deplatformed. He's getting hundreds of thousands of views. He's been allowed to speak his perspective about the story. And his perspective about the story is that he stated he tried his best in this scenario, whilst also stating that um, he could have done better. Huh? It was pretty incessant for a while, and it was so scary and confusing. I, I, I honestly, I, I absolutely tried my best. I, I completely know that I could have done better. I, I really tried my best during that time. So you tried your best, but you also could have done better. I, I, I am a little bit confused here. Um, what, what, what does that even mean? <laughs> and then he continues to give more of his sob story whilst also stating that he uh, said some stupid flipping things. Just no It seemed like nothing was being figured out and nothing could be done for quite some time. Mm -hmm. The thing is, during this time that lasted for months, you know, there were just times where I was so exhausted. And I got frustrated at the problem, at the situation. It seemed like it wasn't getting better. And sometimes I said some stupid, flippant, short things. I think, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I've since apologized for these things. It's embarrassing. Mm -hmm. You know, these weren't things that I woke up in the morning and just said to her, you know, this was born out of a, 
a constant state of, of fear and, and exhaustion and frustration, and that does not make them okay. To me, this entire interview is Gus admitting to everything that Sabrina said, but him just saying it in a really nice way. Gus, I, I, I would love to know what these uh, stupid flipping things actually were. What are these flipping things that you said to Sabrina? Because I'd really like to know. Could you please go into the specifics about what these stupid flipping things were? Sometimes I said some stupid flippant short things. Now personally my friends, my little insight into this, this stupid flipping thing, may have been the mental abuse that he put on Sabrina, pressuring her into an abortion that she may not have actually wanted to get. I think that might be the stupid flipping thing, and I don't think anything actually said here is really justifying these stupid flipping things. And a big debate that stemmed from this interview was about the whole debate of whether Sabrina and Gus went and got uh, therapy or counselling. And this clip I'm about to play you guys was such a big point that a lot of people just completely changed their opinion on the whole, I guess, conversation that we're having here. A lot of people turned on Sabrina because about what I'm about to show you guys. And that's incredible to me because it really does just show that a lot of people genuinely just did not care about Sabrina in this situation and they were just looking for any little thing that could allow them to somewhat defend Gus and go back to enjoying his content guilt-free. That's what I take from this. I don't take people caring about what actually happened here. I take that a lot of people just wanted to go back to the content creator that they loved based on a, a small insignificant thing that they could possibly use to defend Gus, which I think is so incredibly disgusting. But it happens in so many scenarios when it comes to victims of abuse. Somebody will get the slightest thing and use that to defend the entire situation and then they will sugarcoat the rest of it by being like, oh, you know, I said some silly things and did some silly stupid goofing gaffes here and there. And it's like, guys, are you so stupid that you're going to be manipulated by this? Because it's clear to me that you are really, really dumb, really, really stupid. And I'm just going to play Nick is not green's coverage of this situation well of this specific part because I want to play a person who actually knows Sabrina quite closely and is friends with her rather than me give my opinion on this bit because I think this is a very important thing that Nick has to say here Gus continually makes it a point that he went to a couple's therapist with Sabrina and said so in his apology but has changed the terminology he uses for the specialist multiple times since the story came up. We sought couples therapy together and, and individual therapy, and, and this was discussed at length. After this incorrect claim from Gus and his apology, Sabrina pointed out that they met with a specific unlicensed couples dating coach from TikTok that Gus finally agreed to meet with. This was also shown to be disconnected from the ectopic pregnancy and had nothing to do with how Sabrina was treated during this time. After I put out my apology video, you know, 24 hours went by and uh, she just, she tweeted out like, never been to a day of couples therapy in my life. And I totally understand the validity in the semantics of, you know, therapy versus counseling. I, again, this is another area I was not very intimately involved involved in and familiar with. So if it was a misclassification error, like I, I totally understand that, but I think it's a little bit more of a binary approach to it to just say, you know, I've never been to a day of this in my life. Um, I really want to exaggerate that even if they had met regularly with a licensed couples therapist, this does not excuse the behavior that Gus inhibited and that he admitted to in his apology and even during this interview. But Gus continually tries to make it a point that these specific appointments were something that Sabrina wanted, which is not true and does not hold weight in the conversation surrounding his abusive actions towards Sabrina, public or private. Here, I just feel like I need to defend myself. Here, it, there were a lot of digs at my character and my decisions, and I said, this is, I just really feel the need to defend myself. Again, I, I was not trying to discredit any of her trauma regarding this medical situation, but I was like, you know, hey, this, we did do these things, and this was a person that she had chosen and she had brought forward to us. Because I wanna point out again that Sabrina has only spoken out about the behavior Gus inhibited during her pregnancy in order to tell her story. People tend to forget that they are not connected to the real lives of these people and have no idea what occurred in their relationship outside of this story that Sabrina told in her video. Now I would highly recommend you go and watch this video from Nick. It probably gives a much better insight than I personally have. And that solely comes from the fact that this is a friend of Sabrina and I believe he was somewhat of an acquaintance with Gus beforehand, but that does bring us into the conversation of what actually happened with the friends of Gus Johnson, because it does seem that a lot of people 
turned on Gus Johnson. A lot of people who were friends with the guy, including former co-star Eddie Burback, who put out two statements speaking about Gus Johnson and seemingly supporting Sabrina in this situation. And personally, I feel like that says a lot. I feel like it says a lot that some of Gus's best friends are now no longer friends with him after this situation. I think that shows that there is a lot of things that have gone on behind the scenes that we possibly don't know yet. And it also shows that despite all of the terrible things that are public, this probably gets much worse behind closed doors. And some people may say, well, what, are we meant to just give an opinion based on things that we don't know? I'm not saying that. I'm saying that you should probably just give an opinion based on the fact that this dude publicly is admitted to pressuring somebody into an abortion. But also, should you should just take in the context of, oh, but also his best friend has turned on him. I think that does speak volumes. And we will go further into that debate of friendship in this situation, but I also do just want to cover a very, very important part of this interview of where Gus actually states that Sabrina tried to get back with him, and I think this is a very important thing that we need to cover here. During the breakup, when we were coordinating her coming back over to the house to get some of her stuff and move out, mm -hmm. um, I had offered to watch the dog for her when she was out of town, and it was pretty shortly after we did private privately break up that I was watching the dog one weekend and she came back to get some stuff from my house and to get the dog and she surprised me uh, because she came back in and she had brought me some gifts and said that she wanted to get back together with me that she was sorry that it didn't work out and she didn't want to give up and she said she wanted to come back into my life and I just looked at all the effort that we had put in in the last year and I, I just thought that we had really given it as much of a try as we possibly could. And I just said, I'm sorry, like, I'm not, I'm not there right now. I don't think it's a good idea. Yeah. Um, and this was before I put out the public statement at all on Twitter in the few days after, or in the, you know, since after we broke up. And I was texting her that morning saying, like, I want you to weigh in on what we have to say. I don't want to put out anything without checking in with you. I understand that we're both public individuals and I just don't want anybody's interpretations of us to fall on the other side. Like, let's let's work on this statement together. Um, she, she came back in and she said that that evening and she wanted to get back together. I said I wasn't ready to do that. Um, and and she screamed at me and said, you know, you can put out whatever you want, but don't say it was mutual. That's a lie. And she slammed the door and left my house. Um, Whoa. and then really shortly afterwards, um, this video came out that talked about the worst time in both of our lives. And I just, I just wasn't expecting it. A lot of people were taking this again and acting like this is some big groundbreaking thing. And I think that is quite disturbing that people keep taking these very minute things and being like, wow, wow, I can't believe this. I guess I can go back to supporting Gush Johnson again and watching all of the content and consuming it. That's what this whole thing is about, guys. I think a lot of people out there were fans of Gus and are now looking for any possible way to go back to being a fan of this guy guilt-free. Because a lot of people clearly see that terrible things have happened here and they are now looking for some form of justification. And this isn't a justification. Firstly, Sabrina saying that this, I guess, statement that Gus was going to put out wasn't a two-way thing is perfectly valid because if she didn't want to put her name on that, then it is clearly not a two-way thing and it is not a mutual thing. I think that's perfectly valid and I don't understand why anybody is taking that and acting like this is some gotcha moment. And secondly, I want to cover the fact that Gus said that she slammed a door whilst also holding her dog and holding gifts. I would like to know how, I'm not trying to body shame here, but how a, a pretty small person would slam a door whilst carrying gifts and holding a dog. I, I, I would really love to know how that happened. I, I can't imagine it was necessarily an aggressive slam, but also even if it was, given the shit that this woman has gone through, I think she's probably got the, got the, 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 the excuse to slam slam a door here and there. It's not like it's this big traumatic thing. If she did slam a door, okay, that doesn't negate 
anything here, and I don't care if it upset you, man. You've done some pretty messed up things, and a slammed door isn't going to negatively impact the rest of your life. But personally, I don't even believe it happened, as does a lot of her friends, well, all of her friends, seemingly, because a lot of people have come out and said, that doesn't sound like Sabrina, that doesn't sound like just her in general nature, it doesn't seem like she is somebody who would, I, I guess, get aggressive and start shouting, and even if she did shout, I think she has the full right to in this situation, and then a lot of people pointed out, well, 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 she tried to get back with him, okay? A lot of victims of abuse, a lot of people dealing with PTSD, go back to relationships where they heavily relied on that person in that relationship. This isn't a new thing, guys. And even if this was true, again, it doesn't negate anything that happened in that previous relationship. It doesn't, I, I guess, deflect Gus's actions, and he basically admits that in this. He repeatedly says throughout this whole interview that he doesn't want to negate her trauma. I do not want to negate or discredit any of the legitimate trauma that she had to go through. So it's clear even he acknowledges that, yet for some reason people are taking this as some weird gotcha moment. It's not a gotcha moment, it's something that happens frequently when people are dealing with PTSD. Gus has literally put out multiple statements apologizing for his treatment of Sabrina and reiterated that behavior in this interview, but he just sugarcoated it and tried to nice it up a little bit. None of this excuses anything that Gus Johnson has done, and I don't understand why anybody is acting like it does. And as I said earlier, you've got to think a lot of friends turned on Gus, and I think that really does say quite a lot about this situation. Unfortunately, it, it, it didn't just stop from a public front. Um, she, she took to a lot of my friends and, and people that I do business with that aren't publicly personalities as well and, and tried to get them to stop working with me. Um, tried to cut off connections. Um, and I know this because in the last half of a year, I've had a number of these people come to me personally and just say that she made them feel extraordinarily uncomfortable. I mean, yeah, I, I, I'm sure the conversation of finding out a good friend or business associate was abusing somebody mentally is probably an uncomfortable topic to hear. I would be quite uncomfortable if I found out that one of my best friends was doing terrible things to his partner at the time. I think that would be uncomfortable, but naturally I would hear that and listen and take these things in. I don't need to be comfortable to hear that somebody has done something terrible because it's an uncomfortable topic. Naturally, it probably makes everybody uncomfortable to hear that somebody pressured somebody into getting an abortion. Especially when Gus has seemingly admitted to these things on Twitter.com. But again, my question is, is why have so many acquaintances remained turned on Gus Johnson, including his former best friend, Eddie Burback? This one might be rough. Uh, but a lot of us uh, from the sidelines were really confused about what happened between you and Eddie. Um, we got two, I think, two big responses from him that were confusing and vague, and uh, he painted himself... He, he, he was fully on Sabrina's side, okay, but he also painted himself as a victim, and then he kept saying, you know, don't ask me about it, I don't want to be involved but I was fucked too. Uh, I mean, you don't need to share personal intimate details, but is there anything you want people to know about that? I totally understand the question. Um, I don't want to make Eddie's life more difficult one single bit. Um, I, I'm sure this will probably be a disappointing answer to some. Um, mm -hmm. I don't want to be misrepresentative of mine and Eddie's current relationship. You know, mm -hmm. we, do, we, we don't speak. Um, I... I don't want to drag anybody else into this. Um, and I think if there are f people out that are out there that are fans of either my work or his or our collective work completely, um, people that really give a shit about us don't really want to see us be fighting or say disrespectful things to each other. Um, so I'm just, I'm just not going to do that. Um, I've been really happy to see all of his successes lately. I hope that those continue. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think that's as much as I want to talk about in regards to him. Everyone in the chat's like, wow, wow, what an amazing answer. Thank 
just so much, dude. This is such an incredible response. You're so amazing, dude. No. No, this is not an amazing response. This is clearly Gus acknowledging that Eddie does not want to remain friends with him anymore. And there is probably reason for that. There is probably reason for this guy not wanting to publicly fight this guy. Guys, if I was lied about about my best friend, if I was lied about by somebody on the internet, I would probably come out responding quite heavily. I don't care about a previous friendship. I would come out and defend myself if I knew those things were lies, and I think it's a little bit sus that he is not coming out and defending himself against his former best friend. I think it's incredibly telling, and one of the most telling things, that his former business partner and best friend no longer wants to be friends with the guy. So in conclusion, when I first heard about this interview, people made it sound out like this was this amazing PR masterpiece that saved the career of Gus Johnson, and look, he's doing just fine, guys. He hasn't got a career to save because he's getting 300 thousand views a video. People are speaking about this dude being cancelled, but the guy's killing it in terms of views. He's doing absolutely fine. I think this interview absolutely sucked, and I genuinely don't understand why people are acting like it was this groundbreaking thing, and I think it probably is just a lot of people out there are looking for some form of justification to guilt-free support the guy's content, because they, for the last few years, have loved his videos, and I, I think that's very sad, and if you are one of those people, you may be doing this subconsciously without even realizing, but please, for the love of God, just look at this and see that you are being manipulated. This isn't a guy that was cancelled. He gets hundreds of thousands of views a video. He gets thousands of dollars a month from the AdSense and brand deals on those videos. He is doing absolutely fine. He wasn't cancelled. He is speaking about these things regularly on interviews, on his own channel, on his own Twitter page. He wasn't deplatformed. He's doing fine and he has spoken and defended himself and I don't understand why anybody is acting like he was cancelled. Guys, this interview sucked and I'm just going to be pretty brutal about it and say if you support him after this, it's very clear to me that you've been manipulated. I'm going to end this video by saying, for one, I just mispronounced manipulated, but I think that just shows how shocked I am by this entire thing. I don't understand why this interview is being hacked herald like God's gift. It was just a pretty generic interview where he sugarcoated things and I'm repeating myself because I'm actually shocked. That is the end of this video. I'm again sending nothing but my support to Sabrina and the friends of Sabrina in this situation that have had to deal with Gus Johnson. Please, for the love of God, go watch Nick's video, go watch Sabrina's video and send them some love because they truly do deserve it in this scenario. And I think that Gus Johnson's fan base are probably going to hound this video, hound their responses. So please, if you could do so, like this video, uh, comment your opinions, I guess. Yeah, uh, follow my social medias, Twitter at iNabba69, Instagram at iNabba, Twitch at iNabba. It's all there in the description. I'm sorry this video seems all over the place. I do just find this whole thing very jarring, and I try to come at this at a kind of unscripted... Um, I have a little script in front of me, but I wanted to give my raw take on this, because I feel like a scenario like this deserves a raw take, especially given the fact that I have covered this. I'm not trying to exploit this for further views. I do just think, given that I've covered it... I should have covered this and that's why I had. That is the end of this video. Thank you so much for coming along. I'll see you in the next one where I'll probably be a bit more lighthearted. Take it easy and have a wonderful day. Peace out, people. Bye-bye.